Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra and I am a watercolor artist. Welcome to part six of my series, Watercolor Wildflowers for Beginners. I received a comment on one of my recent videos asking specifically for me to teach how to paint lilacs. So today, that's what we're gonna learn. Let's get started. For supplies today, I have two cups of water, one for clean and one for dirty water, a napkin for drying my paintbrushes. For paintbrushes, I'm using Princeton Rounds numbers 2, 8, and 12. For paper, I have 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. And lastly, for paint, I'm using a mixture of Windsor and Newton's series 2 and 3 watercolor paints. I'll mostly be using a combination of some purple some green, some pink, and a little bit of blue. So for this painting, we're going to be using a lot of a wet on wet technique just to get the really neat variation in color that you often see when you're looking at lilacs. I am going to start by using my number 12 paintbrush and I'm just going to wet my page sort of in the shape of the flower. If it's easier for you guys, feel free to look up some photos of a reference just to know kind of where to start with these. So just to give you guys a quick overview before I jump right in, because it's gonna be hard to see with the water, so you'll have to <laughs> wait a minute or skip ahead a little bit. But I am sort of following the shape of the flower where it starts at a point together, and it's gonna come wider towards the bottom. But I'm focusing on painting all of the little petals with the water. So I'm just gonna start by adding this in, and then once I add color in, you guys will be able to see much better what it is that I'm doing. So I'm painting spots with water and I'm making sure that I'm being really careful to leave white space in between in my painting. And as I come towards the bottom, I'm doing bigger splotches with water. And I'm gonna do a really nice full lilac flower right now. Okay, so I've painted in my water. I know you guys can't quite see it yet, but I'm gonna go in and start adding color to it now. So I'm going to start with my purple here. I'm just gonna mix it with a touch of blue. I switched to my smaller number eight brush just so I have a little bit more control with this step. And I'm just gonna go and just begin by dotting it in to my painting wherever I've added water. So as I do this, you guys will see what I did and how I sort of just painted splotches with water. Now the reason I'm using a wet on wet technique for this is because I want it to look really soft and really elegant and flowy but I can fill in if I feel like not enough of the white space is filled. I have to move relatively quickly just so that we can get all of our color in while the paint is still, or while the paper is still wet. And now moving very quickly, I'm gonna start adding in some more colors. So I'm going in, I'm mixing a little bit of my purple and my magenta, and I'm just gonna dot it in throughout my flower so I can add more depth to my painting. So right away you can see how pretty that is, how it adds so much more interest. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing with my blue. Now, if you guys notice, depending on where you are, what time of year it is, lilacs are often sort of like hydrangeas, such a beautiful mix of colors. So that's why I wanna use this technique to really get this lovely mix 
And it's also such a good way to practice a wet on wet technique. Okay, so now that we have that, we are going to let it dry and then we're gonna go in and add a little bit more detail after, but I wanna start with us painting sort of the branch of the flower. So with my number two paintbrush, I'm going to mix a green color that I want to use for my stem. And starting from the bottom of my flower, I am just going to paint a skinny, slightly curved line coming down. I think I had a little too much paint on there, so I'm actually just gonna pick some of it up with my brush that I've just put some water on. So I want it to be a little less dark. And now that I've done that, we wanna add some leaves in that sort of look like they're coming out from behind our flower here. So I'm going in back to my number eight brush and using a wet on dry technique here, I'm gonna paint in some leaves and kind of have them look like they're drooping down a little bit. So I'm starting with the tip of my paintbrush down and I'm applying pressure as I pull back in sort of a C curve shape to get that nice leaf shape. I'm just gonna make them look like they're drooping a little bit. I can do some going down my branch if I want. And now just like I did with my flower, while the paper is still wet, I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit of yellow. Just give it a little bit more vibrancy. And then we'll add some details once that dries. And I can even go in right away if I want and just add the little stems attaching the leaves to this main branch. So at this point, if you guys wanted, you definitely could leave your painting as it is, but I wanna go in and make it more vibrant and add a little bit of layering to it. So I still wanna keep this as more of a loose floral, so I don't wanna go in and add super, super precise details, but I do want to make it look a little bit more like it is a cluster of flowers. So to do that, I'm going in with my brush. I'm using my number eight again here. I'm just mixing my color. I'm gonna do a little bit of a combination of purple and blue. And I'm going to go in and just add more definition to what I've already painted. So I'm not fully painting over top of it, but I'm sort of just adding these little kind of petal type shapes into sections of it. And I wanna still make sure that I'm letting what I painted underneath show through so that we're not losing that really nice blend of colors. So I'm sort of painting little oval shapes that almost look like they could be flowers, but I'm doing it very, very loose And as I mentioned before, I'm making sure that I'm still allowing that color underneath to really show through. You'll notice as I'm painting these, it's not too specific, it's not too detailed, but it's just gonna make everything else stand out that much more. I'm 
I can even fill in a little bit more of the white space if I feel like it needs it. So you can see that just by adding these sort of circle shapes that kind of imitate the flowers, and I'm not actually painting specific flowers, it truly transforms the painting. Okay, so now that I've added that in loosely with my number eight paintbrush, I'm gonna go in with my number two and add some more in. It's a little bit more detailed here. So I'm gonna continue following that same very loose concept, but I'm just gonna add in some darker circles that are kind of showing where the center of some of the flowers would be. And again, everything is really loose and abstract. So if you're looking at it, you may not be able to see exactly where you wanna paint, but we're just adding in some darker splotches throughout. And if it feels like they're a little too dark, you can go back in with your clean paintbrush and just pick up a little bit of that paint. Now that I've done that, we can add some more detail to our leaves. So I'll start by adding the veins to my leaves. So I'm gonna go over top of them with a little bit more pigmented version of what I was just painting with. And I'm gonna add in some really thin lines to act as the veins of the leaf. I'm doing them all really loose. I started with one down the center and then I'll do some coming out on either side. I'm not super particular with them. I just want to add that super subtle detail. And while I'm working on the leaves, I can add a little bit more dark paint to some spots on my main stem there. As well as throughout my leaves. One of the other things that I love to do with my leaves just to make them brighter is use a glazing technique and we're gonna add a touch of yellow into them. So the idea with this is that I have a watered down yellow and I'm just gonna paint directly on top of where I've already painted with that color in portions of my leaf. So I'm not filling the entire leaf, but I'm just adding a little bit more vibrancy to it. And I can add to my stem as well, just to carry it through. All right, and the very last thing that we're going to do is carry a little bit of the green color in through our flower. So you guys can see that I've left some white gaps in my flower. What I want to do with that is going with my really small brush, I'm watering down my paint a little bit, 
and I'm just going to continue the stem all the way towards the top and just attach some of my petals. So I'm doing really skinny little lines, sort of facing them to aim at that center line, but just so that it's sort of peeking through. And this will carry that green color all the way through and gives it a really nice effect. And there you guys have a beautiful, loose watercolor lilac. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you followed along, make sure to take a photo of it, share it with me on Instagram at Alexandra Victoria Studio. Also, if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to this channel, and leave a comment below if there's a specific wildflower that you would like to learn next. Lastly, I have a watercolor e-course coming out in September. I've linked below. Check out the website if you guys are looking for more details on that. See you next time.